Once the Redwood violin was finished, I thought that it would be great to be able to record the names of the musicians who play on it. And so, together with a number of local artisans, we put together this logbook. So the cover of the book is wood, and it's actually made up of uh, bookmatched veneers from a commercially grown walnut tree. And um, the veneers were prepared by my friend Mark Tindley, and he happened to have this piece of wood that was um, taken from the part of the tree where the graft occurred between the California black walnut and the English walnut on the top. You can see the line there. Uh, so we took the veneers and um, arranged them in a pattern that we thought looked something like the trunk of a redwood tree. Uh, I carved some letters on the outside. And then uh, inside we have a title page. Um, and this, so the rest of this book was put together by the North Bay Letterpress Arts in Sebastopol. And um, the, the type is part of their collection of vintage types that they have. It's printed on the, their letterpress machines and you can, uh, you can feel the embossing from the letters. Um, this is uh, the salamander from the back of the violin and I made a little wood block um, for that. There's um, a description of the project here. And then a list of everyone who was involved in making the violin. So um, it's got the source of the materials, uh, names of the craftspeople that helped. And then here we started collecting names of musicians who've been playing on the violin. And eventually, um, next year, I'm going to donate the violin to the uh, youth orchestra. And somewhere around here, uh, we'll start listing the names of the student that gets to keep the violin for a year. Right at the back, there's a little thing about, uh, there's a name for this and I can't remember what it is, but uh, about this book, how it was made and um, the members of the North Bay Letterpress who helped. Um, this is called an iron hand press, and it's modeled um, about 400 or so years after the Gutenberg invention, but cast in steel with some advantages over the Gutenberg drive mechanism, but the same way of printing and pressing. So the type is down facing up on this press bed, and you secure it with um, wedges like that, that are cranked like this. Might be the best yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, this one, I like the, the salamander color on this one. Mm -hmm. This is really this one of the older bindings in uh -huh. history. So it's kind of cool. What I like is that um, by using um, this binding, we didn't have to have a different stitch at the ends. The braid goes on all of them instead of having a different kettle at the end. Oh, the okay. End. That's something like I didn't know Like each one is exactly the same. A lot of the Coptic books have the ends have a little different look. And I thought it was better to have them all. Uh-huh. I like same. it. And I like how the spacing worked out on there because it has the steadiness that it needs to open and close it, but it has a little uh -huh. it kind of... more interest. Yeah. It did, it took... Um, two needles for each of these stations. So wow. it took 
uh, eight needles. Oh, going, going at, at the once. same time? Yeah. Oh, God. Did you get tangled? <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I thought they would, but I think when, you, when you're when um, you using wax thread, if you keep stroking it, it stays sort of Oh, in, okay. And so you just keep stroking oh, good. it in it. That's not like the sheep's guts that I was working with. <laughs> <laughs> they got really tangled. There were some <laughs> moments, but it's really because the needles were sticking in the way. Yeah. And it's recessed at the back. I, I mean, yeah, is I think that the, the recess the, worked out yeah. really good. It's see, it's so um, subtle. It's just uh -huh. because otherwise, I think it would have, if anything was shifting, it would show. Right. But it's right. so subtle. It's just, a, I think it worked out well.